Greetings, dear friends. We come together again in this circle. 2025 initiative together with the Hikal group from Jerusalem, convening this gathering monthly to meditate and invoke archetype of peace as it's behind the great center of Jerusalem. Thank you for joining and thank you for this continuous service together. Over to you, Uta. Hello, friends. Welcome. Um, since last month, uh, since our last Open Jerusalem meditation, our core group has experimented with making contact with the Deva of Jerusalem, the being which holds the intended design of the city of peace. We don't know so much about what is a Deva of a city but we do know that it is a large being of ancient origin, which holds this position for a long time, uh, for uh, compared to a human. So to build a real cooperation with a large Deva, we have to match somehow its substantiality. So for us it means, and we are only experimenting with it at the moment, to hold a sustained sincerity. So they, that we will match their size somehow, so they will even notice us. And uh, it's about rhythmical work. This relationship is built over time. And what we are doing at the moment is we are starting to tune in intuitively using our purest esoteric sense. Maybe we can say that we make ourselves intentionally receptive. Let's stay for a moment with this intentionally receptive. So Jerusalem has actually a, a, a double function, you could say. Uh, on the one hand, a local function as the capital of Israel and a planetary significance also as the symbolic city of peace that holds all this hope of a large part of humanity as a symbol for world peace. So it's a very rich intended design for a city. So today we will do this stretch towards the Deva of Jerusalem. And in order to have our grounding also, we, we, we balance this new focus. Um, <clears throat> with kind of a counterpart on the ground to this Deva of Jerusalem. And we, are, we came up with this uh, uh, Asajoli's um, concept of the best citizens of the city. It's like a human counterpart on the ground to the Deva of Jerusalem. Best citizens are, according to Asajoli, individuals, who are awake enough and, and care enough um, for taking a responsibility for a collective. And they are able or learning 
to be self-reflecting, to become aware of this collective as an entity. And to move into a kind of a stewardship for this entity. Okay, so before we go into meditation to try it out, let's hear uh, our co-workers who are locally in Jerusalem to help us ground, get a sense of, uh, of Jerusalem at this moment. Please, Efrat and Helen. Hi, good evening. This is Efrat from Jerusalem. Um, Jerusalem is a cent central place reflect what uh, the, the atmosphere and the events uh, that the whole country goes through now. But Jerusalem is uh, really a center of a lot of uh, tension and, and conflicts. And if we look only on the surface, we will see the conflicts, the, the sometimes violent, uh, a lot of noise. And also because we are facing an election, so it's so noisy, everyone, everybody, just shouted the uh, slogan and and the the whom are the good good guys and bad guys so if we look in this uh, perspective it's a big uh, chaos but uh, according to our uh, work in the core group try to to connect with the dev of jerusalem and try to see with whom, if we can say so, the Deva can work, really helped us to, to realize and to, um, to see this best citizen. And those are the people who hold all during 36, five days a year, the ideas of democracy, of justice, uh, of human rights, and because we are facing an elec uh, election, so they are more and more in the street. So uh, we had once an uh, image of them like a pillar that uh, come from the ground, but in a way um, go above the reality and like making a, a how do you say it? Uh, a landing, a landing pass for the for the devas or for the forces that uh, can't go or, or maybe won't go deep into the chaos. So when we emphasize or want to focus about the best citizens, as we call them, it does uh, single people and and groups that go out in the street and, and hold the ideals of democracy, justice, human rights for everyone. Thank you. Hi, can you hear me? Because I have a new internet here. Yeah? Yes, Helen, you're fine. Hi. Hi, this is Helen, also from Jerusalem. And I would like to bring some uh, personal experiential observations um, that I uh, experienced those last few days from uh, living in a different part of the city. For many, many years, I lived on the mountains and uh, I moved into the city. And I am more aware of the humming sound of a living city, which is kind of blown up uh, by the activity of all kinds of advanced technology, sounds of building, electric air conditions, uh, transformers, traffic, 
um, all this uh, in this new neighborhood where I moved in, it's all trapped in between buildings, like a big genie, you know, like of a uh, of uh, the lamp of Aladdin. All of this uh, together with gardens and flowers and birds that we can hear among this uh, in the midst of this noise or just before the noise begins during the day. Uh, it is all so very different than uh, the former neighborhood I lived in, which uh, the pristine mountain air and the open space and the valleys, the sound of the Arabic language spoken mixed with Hebrew, uh, I'm just bringing here a short impression of uh, uh, something new for me that is more on an, on this experiential level of um, of the diversity of this city and uh, <laughs> of this energy that. Uh, um, that I feel when I move around, and especially now that I live somewhere else in this in the city, and I um, I do uh, I do acknowledge um, the diversity on uh, on a very deep personal level. Uh, I don't know how how much it makes sense, but this is what I wanted to share about. Uh, about uh, Jerusalem today, this diversity of a city which is uh, which is a symbol. Yeah, this is it. Mm. Thanks, Helen. Thanks, Efrat. Get a little sense of this living entity, Jerusalem. So let us take this now into meditation and experiment, open ourselves especially to these new, these two new elements. The Deva of Jerusalem is, is uh, really new and the best citizens of Jerusalem uh, is not new but in this new new way to see them more clearly in the function energetically that they fulfill uh, within the aura of Jerusalem. So afterwards in, in our sharing we can um, yeah, compare notes so to speak uh, specifically about these two elements. Okay. So, let us withdraw our attention inwards to a place of perfect stillness. Breathing deeply, connecting with the solidity of our body. Grounding with the earth and in the embrace of the mother of the world, especially feelable now in the sign of Virgo. Sitting well in our body. and resting in the peace of our heart. And focusing now in the center of the head. Standing 
as the incarnated soul, poised and radiant. Fully present. And let us turn now our attention towards Jerusalem. Focusing in now on our focal point of love and light and spiritual will, our group vehicle, our etheric temple, somewhere in the upper part of the aura of Jerusalem. And as we enter it, let us sense its force field of dynamic harmony. and geometrical strength joining our hearts joining our thinking Standing together as souls, as space holders for Jerusalem, silent watchers. Perceiving our focal point in Jerusalem as one of the points in the great network of world service all over the planet, each group fulfilling their specific function in their specific place and all linked through inner unity of purpose. Sense it for a moment as a planetary presence, this whole network. And within it, we now take our stand at the midway point between the higher world and Jerusalem below. Taking a brief look downward into the aura of Jerusalem. Just an overview, sensing it, connecting with it. A living entity. Now connecting upwards as a group to the higher worlds. And specifically, specifically to the higher co-workers who support and guide this Jerusalem project, human and Deva.
Let us make their presence with us as real as we can. They stand behind us and surrounding us. And in their protective aura, let us now release all previous thought and approach in silent receptivity the Deva of Jerusalem, opening our intuition to the higher pattern which this being holds for the city. Take a few minutes in silence.
refocusing now in our focal point midway between on high and Jerusalem below. We bring into our group field the high vibration and hold it, letting it stabilize. And seeing it now streaming forth into the city. Visualize this high vibration being picked up by the group of best citizens of Jerusalem who stand as pillars of light in a sea of moving energies. We stand behind them See the golden vibration strengthen and protect them. And see them like lighthouses broadcasting the high signal into their respective fields of influence. See the trees and the little deva builders help weave this high signal into the aura of Jerusalem. See the trees anchoring it into the earth. Connecting the light in the heavens with the light within the earth. See the aura of Jerusalem glow with warm golden light, making whole, unifying. And we affirm unity. The souls of all are one, and we are one with them. We seek to love, not hate. We seek to serve and not exact due service. We seek to heal, not hurt. Let pain bring due reward of light and love. Let the soul control the outer form and life and all events and bring to light the love which underlies the happenings of the time. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate and outer cleavages be gone. Let love prevail 
that all humans love. Visualize a golden unifying wave spread out from Jerusalem into the area of Israel-Palestine. Calming, realigning, lifting the consciousness. Just visualize the two peoples working it out together. And see the golden wave spread into all the nations of the Middle East, unifying and reordering. See the energy rising, consciousness rising in the Middle East. Dispersing the dark cloud. Let us see the golden unifying wave expand eastwards and qualifying the etheric body of the planet as we go, visualizing a golden band connecting Jerusalem with Darjeeling. Tracing the golden band further from Darjeeling to Tokyo. Spanning it further to New York. To London. To Geneva. And back to Jerusalem. Let us hold this visualization for a moment of the unifying wave flowing throughout the etheric body of the planet. holding the picture of our planet in peace as we recite the great invocation in Hebrew, Arabic, and English. Nekudat ha'or, asher bedat el, zorem ha'or, אל דעת האדם, יורד האור על פני האדמה. 
ונקודת האהבה אשר בלב האל זורמת האהבה אל לבבות אנוש. שב מורה עולם על פני האדמה. מן המרכז שבו נודע רצון האל, מנחה תכלית את רצונות אדם. תכלית אותה מורי האנושות יודעים ומשרתים. מן המרכז אשר נקרא המין האנושי, מוגשמת תוכנית האהבה והאור, ונחתם הפתח אל הרע. יהי רצון, ומחדשים אור, אהבה ועוצמה את התוכנית על פני האדמה. من نقطة النور في العقل الإلهي ليشع النور في عقول الناس وليهبط النور إلى الأرض من نقطة الحب في القلب الإلهي ليتسرب الحب إلى قلوب الناس وليرجع السيد الآتي إلى الأرض من المركز الذي تعرف منها إرادة الله لتقود الغاية إرادة الناس البسيطة تلك الغاية التي يدركها المعلمون ويخدمونها من المركز الذي نظن بالجنس البشري لينتج تسمين الحب والنور ويختم على الباب الذي يقيم به الشر ليجدد النور والحب والقوة التسمين على الأرض From the point of light within the mind of God let light stream forth into human hearts let light descend on earth From the point of love within the heart of God let love stream forth into human hearts May the coming one return to earth From the center where the will of God is known let purpose guide all human wills the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. Oh.
Thank you. And let us open the floor now to share our experiences, especially with the Deva of Jerusalem and the best citizens of Jerusalem. So hello everyone, this is Annette speaking from Germany. Yes, so thank you for this deep and strong meditation, Uta, and also for connecting so well with the crown, Efrat and Helen. I have experienced a very calm, peaceful, and also like enveloping energy in the meditation associated with the Deva of Jerusalem. And I perceived the higher pattern of Jerusalem as already very present on the subtle plane. And then I um, observed that there were also some little parts in a process of already becoming etheric of this um, subtle plane, um, of this pattern higher pattern. Um, yes, and the best citizen. So it was very good to visualize the best citizen as anchor points, as pillars on the ground in the turmoil and diversity of the city ground. And in addition to the people um, F had mentioned, I noticed them also in the most diverse groups and areas of society. For example, also in connection with art, social work, nature, and groups I wouldn't have expect. So, uh, yes. And then the little devas I experienced also so important in beefing so joyfully the high energy into the crown of Jerusalem. And then at the end, the pulsating golden energy across the planet. So. For me, a very effective meditation. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Annette. Well, <clears throat> I can go on. Thank you, uh, Uta, for this meditation. So clear and precise. Uh, I too, I, I had a very strong impression from of the Deva of Jerusalem, holding it over, it's over, over the uh, overshadowing uh, the the city, the uh, uh, Jerusalem, and like uh, connected with the peace. The deep, a deep peace, receiving a deep peace, and releasing it to the best, to Jerusalem, the best citizens who were able uh, to uh, to feel this and to uh, spread it uh, further out in in uh, the city. Um, and uh, Frat and Helen, it was very helpful uh, to be uh, good to be grounded in in what you told about them. It was very uh, clear, uh, connected to the uh, city, uh, the the best citizens. Um, and as you said, and that uh, uh, about uh, working with art and music and so on. Uh, and on a higher level, above all this turmoil. Uh, and in fact, you have told so much about the uh, demonstration for for uh, for right relation, for democracy, and it helps a lot to the, what you were telling us. So so it is really grounded. So thank you. I had a, some a feeling of electricity, electric energy from the, the from the deva of, of jerusalem thank you 
Mm. Thanks, Grete. Mm. Yeah, when we when we train ourselves to to perceive a city not so much through the ethnicity, let's say, or the, really, the different religions and so on, but energetically or electrically, as you said, um, we get um, yeah, a, a deeper picture of what's going on in a city as an entity. Also, Helen, what you shared, you know, what you what you sense now in your new location, that uh, uh, it sounded as if you are um, connected um, because of this more thickness, density, um, more um, more directly with the aura of Jerusalem maybe the astral body or the mental body. Um, mm. Thank you. I too felt an interesting energy. And when Helen, I hope I'm saying your name right, and the other speaker in the beginning really invoked for me this feeling of noise and cacophony. And in that sense, I felt called to invoke an intention of stillness from our group and a silence that the Deva of Jerusalem would be able to hear us, sense us, understand us, um, listen to us. And as we created thought forms of unity and sort of the pure action of peace that that would that would be audible for her um it it was an interesting thing to hold that silence and that silence became colored and it was a violet color and it then was able to be sort of seen in my mind's eye and to be distributed and placed in places as we went through the meditation um, it was particularly enveloped around the best citizens of Jerusalem so that they too, in that stillness and quietness, would be able to align in, in the purest way that they could and do the work and service that they sacrifice themselves to do. Um, there was joy in the silence. And one of you just mentioned little devas. And that, to me, was absolutely palpable in the joy. There was this sparkling within the silence. It wasn't a, a stillness that was that still. And the um, color, that violet color, when, when, when Uta, you started to distribute that energy beyond Jerusalem and into the sacred centers of the earth, it fused with that golden light and was a beautiful violet golden light. But there was just this importance to bring silence and stillness into Jerusalem amidst the cacophony that is there right now on the physical plane. Oh, thank you for this sharing. A silence that was violet. Uh -huh. so, much, so much to, to, to learn about this, to experiment with. Very inspiring. Thank you. This is Mark in Sarasota. Can you hear me? Yes, Mark. Hi. Good. The meditation was beautiful. Thank you, Uta, for your organization. And uh, pre-meditation is actually great. And the sharings are so beautiful today. Nice to be with a larger group. Uh, Helen, when you dis <laughs> When you describe the building of buildings, it reminds me of what's happening here in Sarasota. Also, 
And uh, but looking at it and listening to what the masters seem to say in an optimistic way is there we're being asked to still maintain our focus on God and the living presence deep into our earth, reaching upward into the higher heavens. And if we maintain that and strengthen that, Jerusalem will not lose its holy, holy, influential presence. Uh, so the other thing that I saw is that there will be unifying interface type temples built amidst all of the, the human uh, living spaces and perhaps the schools will embody some of this also. It's an optimistic vision, but it felt very strong enough to, to, to say that, is that there will be unifying temples, beautiful, maybe even gardens, and there still are very beautiful gardens and parks in Jerusalem and beyond in, in Israel, Palestine. The music it was already mentioned it will be very powerful, and then a unifying light, uh, full spectrum lighting, some kind of light will be there to assist us also in maintaining the sense of unity. And then having been there uh, in the area, I have, I'm, I'm really guided to say the Christian faith is very powerful there. And it's a very strong unifying force in the churches, the monasteries, the people, the schools. And uh, they assist the ecumenical council there run by Christian. So I just want to mention that uh, that is a very strong bridge and a unifying force that we can also uh, uh, say, say optimistically include in the, in the people. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Any more impressions? Well, I'll bring my impressions of this meditation. This is Helen. Um, during uh, uh, the few minutes of silence, I sensed um, a big army of workers on different levels. Uh, helping and supporting and also fighting to maintain human dignity and human sanity and to maintain also clear discernment among the people. It's as if those workers, those uh, entities, those presences are um, have been there all the time and that uh, their mission uh, this was their mission uh, all through the ages I felt a big sense of quiet and at the same time a big sense of busyness busy beings trying to keep people online.
So this whole army is also like uh, doing this work for 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 ages. This this was my uh, <laughs> this is what I picked up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, they're doing they're doing this work for ages, and they uh, I, and and uh, you know there is there is a cooperation there. This is why they are busy, also mm. not working on on uh, on empty uh, uh, you know on, on, how do you say it? an empty circle, yeah. Mm. Mm. In response to the humans. Yeah. Mm. See Deborah. Hello, Uta. Hi. It's good to be here with you all today. Um, yeah, I I had an interesting image that flowed from, as it were, like being in the flow of many streams, like colored streamers of of spiritual endeavor kind of swirling in a spiral spiraling around um jerusalem and they had deep and profound essence of spirituality deep past deep present and deeply future uh including the contribution of science as it will unveil to us the face of the true spiritual sun, if you will, right? I mean, that we aren't born, don't die, we are one, that, that reality being revealed also through science. And, but those streams that began you know, rotating, spiraling up, congealed into a huge, beautiful stone, like a round marble of power and beauty uh, that became a central, a central temple, if you will, that radiated all of the spiritual wealth uh, that we have in our midst, overshadowing, embodying, and so forth, past, present, and future. So that was what I came away with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember, if I remember right, from from uh, uh, previous sharings of you, Deborah, this this recognition of continuity, um, of past, present, and future, how it is weaving, how we can perceive it in Jerusalem, maybe maybe especially um, especially distinct. Hmm. How reality is being woven along a timeline. Sabina, did you raise your hand previously?
for some weather reasons, I came in a little bit later, but I got Helen's exchange with the, yeah, the pre-meditation as somebody mentioned. And I would like to share um, that when, so thank you for this meditation, Uta, which was very high energetic and very colorful. It was so much light in it and so much movement. Um, when we started to be in this higher sphere of the aura of Jerusalem, I sensed three big powerful essences, maybe Deva or big angel. And they were somehow like a triangle standing together. And it seemed to me they are for a long, long, long time working on this. And from then there were like um, silk strings to all the groups in the city, to all new um, organizations or in its initiative or things like that. And there was a constant nourishing each other. So from down to up and from up to down. And while this became more and more, it, it was um, like, like a music which gets louder and louder. So these three big essences, they somehow become more shiny, shiny, and they melted together like one. It was like a like a powerful sacrificing. And then there was a bride. This was a pregnant bride mm -hmm. sitting in this shiny bubble or light in this big, big light. And the, the strings were still there. Yeah, and there was a lot of radiation from this uh, bride. And I asked myself, who will come to marry her? Mm. And when we then had this um, connecting between Jerusalem and uh, Tokyo and so on, the once, once, once a time around the world, it was like each of these places was sacrificing something to give the best to this bride. Mm. This was my impression. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. Well, very rich. Thank you, Sabina. This is Margot. The the uh, theme of of strings or silk threads seems to be appearing for for several of us. Um, at the first, I, I was, as I was observing Jerusalem, it was as if there was a dust storm clouding the view and connecting with the deva. I actually began observing a sensation in, in my solar plexus, and it, which moved to the heart. And then it expanded beyond there. There was a gradual expansion and an awareness to connect beyond or perhaps through or in spite of the sensation that I was registering. The expansion was shaped like a V. The point of the V was firmly anchored on and into the ground. The arms of the V continued to extend upward and out. But with the root, or the, the point of the V still being deeply grounded in, in Jerusalem. And a sense of becoming prepared and then this enormous light or presence or radiance began emitting waves. And then Uda spoke about allowing it to stabilize. This radiance or high vibration changed shape into rays in order to be more able to easily enter and strengthen the best citizens. It seemed as if the trees were supporting the citizens. And then it just morphed into one golden hole of different 
frequencies and substance. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Margot. Yeah. Our focus on the Deva of Jerusalem brings us to look with different eyes to see more, more fine substance, it seems. Hmm. The strings of space. Huh? Yeah, anyone else before we close? Next time will be in the sign of Libra. So we will focus a bit more on the energy of peace. Okay, let us continue in this with these silk threads and in the violet silence. Thank you all and see you next month. <laughs>